welcome to the only video about the Leica M3 that you ever need to see. M3 was released in 1954 as a first of the very successful Leica M system. The M system remains pretty much unchanged until modern days. Even though the cameras are digital now, the shape, the form, the size and the way you operate the camera has remained pretty much the same. M3s are made to be used primarily with the 50mm, 90mm and 135mm lenses. If you want to use a 35mm, you need a special one like this one with goggles attached to it. I'll change the lens to a new 50mm just because it will be easier to show the camera with it. I'll be giving you some buying tips at the end of this video, but first let me run you through the camera and show you how to use it. On the back you've got the viewfinder eyepiece which you look through to compose and focus your photographs. You've got the two flash synchronization sockets which you use to synchronize your flash with your shutter. And you've got your film speed reminder which really doesn't do anything apart from reminding you what film you left in the camera the day before. On the top you've got the rewind knob which is used for rewinding the film when you're finished. You've got the cold shoe or accessory shoe which is used for mounting flash guns, external viewfinders, light meters and other accessories. You've got the shutter speed dial which is used for selecting shutter speed. You've got the wind on lever for winding on the film and cocking the shutter after exposure. You've got the shutter button for taking photos and you've got your frame counter that tells you how many shots you've taken on the current roll. On the bottom you've got the tripod thread for mounting the camera on the tripod and you've got your base plate lock for accessing the film chamber and loading and unloading the camera with film. On the front you've got the self timer for the late action shots. Rewind lever for putting the camera in rewind mode after you've finished the roll of film. You have the lens release button for removing the lens. And you have the frame selector lever which allows you to preview what other lenses will do without having to change them. The first thing you will need to do before you can start taking photos is to load the camera with film. Get a standard roll of 35mm film. Unlock the base plate, take it off. You can see there's a little picture here that shows you how to load the film. Open the back plate, take the spool out of the camera, take the new film cassette, and just like on the picture, insert the film into the spool like this. You just kind of have to push it in there with your thumb and you should be able to see film through all the holes in this perforated arrow here. Now pull them apart just long enough so that they can fit in here and push them into the camera all the way, all the way down. Close the back plate, replace the base plate just like this. Now you will see that the frame counter has reset itself to two below zero. That means you have to advance the film twice in order to start the roll. So one, two. Now the frame counter is at zero and the camera is loaded. Next thing you will need to do is to set your exposure. So let's put the lens back on. Red dot here to red dot here. Align them, put the lens in, turn it clockwise until it clicks. Now your exposure settings are your aperture, which you change here, and your shutter speed, which you change by turning this dial. So for the purpose of this video, I'm going to assume we put 200 film inside the camera, so 200 ISO film, and I'm going to assume that you don't own an external light meter, so you have to rely on your judgment to set the exposure. Now we're going to use something called the Sunny 16 rule. 
basically what the rule says is that your film speed at aperture 16 should be the same or as near as possible to your shutter speed. ISO 200, then your film speed should be 200 or the nearest, which is 250 on this camera. Aperture remains f16. Let's say your film speed was 400. That means you have to use the nearest shutter speed to 400, which in this case is 500. So 250 f16 are your settings for a sunny day. Let's say that for artistic vision you want to use a wider aperture. Let's say you want to go two numbers down, so f8. That means you have to go two clicks up on the shutter speed dial, so go to 1000. That basically tells you that the exposure is still correct, but you're using a different aperture and your depth of focus will be a little bit different than at f16. The next thing you need to do before taking a photo is to focus. Now, most of Leica M lenses will have a focusing tab like this. Some of them will, will not have this tab, will only have the focusing ring, so you need to turn the ring on the lens like this. Some of them, especially the older ones, will have something that's called infinity lock. So there's a little button or a little tab that you need to press to release the lens. So at the moment, this lens is not moving. You can't focus it. So you push this button and it releases it. And now you can focus freely. Yeah, and then when you go all the way back to infinity, it clicks and locks. So you look through the viewfinder. There should be a little picture in picture image there showing you what you can see inside the viewfinder. And then you move the focusing focusing tab or focusing ring. And you need to align the two images that you see in the bright patch into one. So the bright patch in the center of the viewfinder is your focusing patch. Two images need to become one in order for your subject to be in focus. So now that you've uh, loaded the camera, set your exposure and focused your shot, you need to capture the decisive moment. Push the button in order to take a photo. Wind on the camera to advance to the next frame and push it again. After 36 to 38 shots, the roll is finished. So you need to put the camera into rewind mode by moving this lever. You need to pull out the rewind knob and just as the arrow shows here, wind the film back into the cassette. So keep going until you feel it, it stops. Now I can feel it stop now and I'm going to take the roll out, but you can continue after it stops a little bit just to make sure the film is all the way back in. I'm just going to try to save the roll so I can do this exercise again. So unlock the base plate and then your film should be all the way in the cassette. I'm going to try to save mine so I didn't put it all the way back. And that's it. You've taken a roll of very beautiful photos. Take a film to the lab or develop yourself, uh, whatever works for you. Buying a Leica M3. Now, it's always best to buy from a reliable source, like a, a reputable dealer or a Leica store, but they don't always have these available and they are usually more expensive than buying them online. Uh, it's a good idea to put a test roll of film through a camera that you're going to buy. If you've got an opportunity to do this, that's the best way to test the camera. You can see if it will focus correctly. You can see if the exposures are the way you want them to be. Otherwise, just uh, use your best judgment. First thing to check is whether the camera is holding together. So make sure it's not loose, there's nothing rattling. Make sure all the levers are moving. Self-timer is not very important, not too many people use it nowadays, but it's always a good idea to check it. It's like kicking tires. Now, 
have a look through the IPs and see if the patch in the middle is bright and if there are two images in there, uh, because sometimes uh, the silver on the rangefinder fades a bit and you can only see one image and that makes the camera unusable. Move the lever back and forth and see if you're able to click between the frames easily and if they're changing while you do it. Open the film chamber. Make sure that the camera comes with a take-up spool. Without the spool, you're not able to take any photos. Have a look to see if it's clean. If it's clean in there, make sure there's no holes in the shutter blind. You can wind it on and fire it. Check the shutter speeds. Switch the camera to one second and fire it a couple of times. Look at the shutter and listen to it. The one second should always sound the same. If the duration and the sound is different every time you press the shutter, that's a sign that something is wrong. Check other speeds like half second and a quarter of a second. They're pretty much the same as one second, just shorter. Then a good speed to check is the 15th. It should have a very specific sound. So listen to this. You can hear kind of like a bounce back after the exposure. Fire the camera at all shutter speeds. Make sure the shutter opens at each and every one of them. The ones to pay special attention to are 1,500, and you don't always see if they open or not. A good way to test these two shutter speeds is to um, make sure the lens is off and the back plate is open. Put your eye up to the shutter and direct it at a bright light source like the sun. If you fire it at these two speeds and you can't see any light coming through the shutter, that means it's not opening. Look at the condition of the leatherette. Now uh, this one here has got original vulcanite, but very often you can find ones with aftermarket leather because the vulcanite has aged and cracked. Check the general cosmetic condition of the camera. That can have a massive impact on the price. So if you get a working camera, but it's not very pretty, you can get yourself a bargain usually. These caps for the sink sockets are very often missing and it's not always easy to get them so it's a bonus if you get both sync caps with the camera. This camera is a double wind or a double stroke so you need two lever actions in order to advance to film one frame. Uh, some later M3s just needed one movement to do that. If you enjoyed this video and found it useful please subscribe to my channel there'll be more interesting videos about cool cameras later on, so stay tuned.